Lord Skidelsky, this is an exceptional moment. Why is this moment not the Great Depression? Well, it's a, a very different situation, isn't it? Because um, what we're what we what we're going what we have is a, a whole lot of industry being shut down, um, and yet um, there's been no real fall in 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 demand uh, purchasing power. And that's because the government's paying. Uh, people, you know, most of their wages. So as we come out of the lockdown, um, we're going to have a high, high inflation. I mean, it, in other words, this is going to be a depression and inflation at the same time, uh, or an inflationary depression, if you like, um, which is very, very unusual. I mean, it, um, it's a bit like what we had in the 1970s when we had something called stagflation, uh, high unemployment and inflation at the same time, because supply has fallen, obviously, but demand hasn't fallen nearly as much. And so when we come out of the um, <clears throat> lock-up, we're going to um, have uh, people right. going to buy a lot more uh, than they are at the moment. Lord Skidelsky, I, I believe you're familiar with the phrase, when the facts change, I change. We're changing yeah. all right now. The Chancellor of the Exchequer in the United Kingdom is just looking at the constraints of government assistance directly for wage support, et cetera. What is your counsel to the Prime Minister you dislike so much? What would you say to Prime Minister Johnson right now to assist the people of the United Kingdom? Well, you know, I never did like uh, dislike Boris Johnson that much. I mean, the person I disliked enormously was George Osborne, who um, really imposed austerity on Britain from, for, for six or seven years when he was chancellor. And that's contributed to a huge uh, lack of capacity, a uh, medical capacity particularly, to deal with, 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 the, with the virus. But what I'd say to Johnson is... I think you've got to um, ease up a bit. You know, uh, a lot of, a lot of um, policy or most policy is driven by uh, medical, medical science. The medical scientists disagree. And so governments have to um, make their own decision and balance the harm um, they're doing, you know, the, the lock, lockdown is doing the economy as against the risk of higher fatalities. And I think um, at the moment we're being perhaps overcautious, um, and we we should uh, we should mm -hmm. be easing up more um, in order to protect the economy because the fatalities from the virus are actually a very very tiny proportion of the number of people who get it. But Lord Skidelsky, do you think, if we go back to the, to the you know, economy of it, do you think austerity globally is being repudiated and will further be repudiated because of this pandemic? Well, of course, the government, all governments, have to support their economies in this period. But what concerns me very, very much is that we, um, uh, that, you know, that we um, don't um, exit this um, with uh, a fiscal system that is in complete disarray. In other words, what we have to, what we have to secure is that um, we, we have a robust fiscal system for the future, um, uh, one that isn't tied down by artificial fiscal rules, but one which doesn't simply react to political, political needs with splurges of spending. And if, we, if it's at all true that this will be an inflationary recession, um, um, we have to find a way yeah. of dealing with inflation further down the line, as well as supporting the economy in the okay, short run. Talk... So it's very, very, mm -hmm. very complicated. Yeah, so we need to talk about inflation. But first of all, how should the UK pay for this rescue package? So austerity also led to cuts amongst NHS and people on the front line. Is the only way now to raise taxes in the UK? Not, not immediately. In the end, we'll pay for it. I mean, we'll pay, we'll pay for it in any case, and the government will just print the money to pay for it. But in the longer run, we have to, um, have to probably have to raise taxes, or we'll pay for it by a higher inflation rate. I mean, one way or the other, um, uh, this will be paid for. I mean, what's wrong is to say we can't afford it. The government can always afford to spend what it wants to. 
It's the consequences of that that we have to take into account. I know that's something How people don't. Worried about I, know, I know that people people find that uncomfortable, but um, it's true. Governments, with their own central banks, can just get enough money to spend whatever they want to. Um, now, the consequences could be a rise in prices. Of course, it could be, and that would be that. That's inflation, and inflation is a way of paying for government spending. It's a way other people pay for government spending. It's a form of tax. Or you can actually tax openly just by increasing the rates of tax. That's how it will be paid for eventually. Okay. What, how, how concerned are you about inflation? And if well, it comes up all the, of a sudden, this could be yeah. extremely painful. Well, in, in, in the long run, in, in the long run, by which I mean as we come out of the lockdown, we don't know how long the lockdown is going to last, but as things get back to normal, you will have had a lot of purchasing power, um, which has been, you know, used to be called pent-up demand, because people haven't had anything much to spend their money on, and suddenly the shops will reopen, and there's going to be a lot of spending. Um, uh, because people will have, over this period, been paid most of their wages, um, and then you'll get inflation. So that, that, mm -hmm. will, that, will, um, that will start rising, well. but at the same time, unemployment will then be increasing. So you have something we haven't had, really, in a big way, ever, and that's the novelty of the thing, an inflationary depression.